Right now, the United States energy system puts about 5 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. It's just too much. It, it exceeds the capacity of the Earth to absorb it again, and it's changing the climate of the planet. The trick is we have to try and keep from putting that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere without giving up the energy that we all love. And the idea is let's try and catch the carbon dioxide before we dump it up into the atmosphere. At this government lab in California, scientists are working on a technology called carbon capture. The goal is to catch the CO2 spewing out of power plants before it goes into the air and then store that CO2 safely underground. This technology is a reality. It's in use at a handful of power plants around the world, but it's still too expensive and inefficient to make a real difference. John Varicella and his team may have found a way to change that. So now you're going to show me the capsules. Kind of give it a little swirl, and you'll kind of agitate them up. And oh, you'll see yeah. that there are a bunch of little capsules in there. And you can grab some and sort of roll them. It's like um, Tobiko, yeah. little, like on, on top of your sushi. Probably don't want to eat these, but yeah. We're trying to improve the way that we absorb and capture carbon. We do that using a, a small micro capsule design. So the idea is that we take a fluid that'll absorb CO2 and we wrap it in a, a shell that's a polymer. So what you would have is these capsules in the exhaust stack and they're being contacted by the exhaust of the coal plant or whatever it is. The CO2 will pass through the polymer shell and be absorbed by that liquid core. And so the CO2 stays inside the capsule. Exactly. Capturing it. Yep. When we started to look at how to capture carbon dioxide, we wanted to think about what are the problems with the existing processes and what can we do to make them better. There's been success at capturing carbon dioxide from power plants and from industry. For the moment, though, it's still too expensive. The problem with carbon capture as it exists today is that it takes a lot of energy to make the process work, which makes it expensive. That's where the capsules come in. They make the process faster, more efficient, and therefore cheaper. Speeding up the process is often about the surface area. And that's the trick that we do with the capsules. By forcing them to be real tiny droplets, they now contact an enormous amount of surface area and absorb the gas faster. So we save energy and we save expense in using this new process. We're going to do a little demonstration. This is just a carbonated drink. And so what we're going to do is pour some of this in there, and we'll add some capsules, and we're going to see them actually absorb the CO2 out of this soda. When they absorb the CO2, they're going to go through a pH swing, and they're going to change from this dark blue to a yellow. So now, so now they're blue. So you can see that they're getting lighter. Yeah, there's a definite yellow tint. So now all that CO2 is inside each tiny, tiny individual capsule. Exactly. And you've got flat soda, too. Right. <laughs> Even if every power plant in the world started using these capsules tomorrow, it still wouldn't be a complete solution to climate change. Capsules aren't really practical in cars, for example, because they would add too much weight. But right now, capturing carbon from fossil fuel power plants is probably our best shot at slowing global warming. That is, until we can switch to cleaner ways of making energy the amount of CO2 that, that we're producing um, needs to be dealt with. This is a way to try to tackle that. John Varicella is going to see these things expand and be used, and he'll live long enough to see these things actually change the climate of the planet. And that's really cool to think about.